In this motion graphics video, I will be going through how to animate simple shapes with circles and lines and help you enhance your workflow. Welcome everyone, I'm your host, Elias Arantopoulos. All right, so let's go ahead and start this off inside Adobe After Effects. The first I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'll give it a name of Accent Motion Graphics. And for the width and height, After Effects comes with a plethora of different presets that we can choose from. In this case, I'll set mine to 1920 by 1080. And let's not forget, the duration of this composition right now is set to 20 seconds, which is actually quite a lot, but we're going to trim this at the very end anyway. I'm just going to click OK. And then up in the Learn menu, New, I'll create a new solid. I'll give it a name of BG. I'm also going to make sure that the solid has the same settings, the same width and height as the composition, which I can actually click where it says Make Comp Size. I'll select the eyedropper and then just choose a color of my choice for my libraries. Click OK. And then I'm also going to lock this layer so I don't accidentally move it. Now, the plan here is to create a straight line, a straight segment from the very center of the composition. And After Effects can help us with that by choosing right here where it says Choose Grids and Guides Options. So click on that and then select the title Action Safe. Here we have at the very center the crosshair, which is basically our reference point. So we'll select the pen tool, click once. Hold down the Shift key to create the second anchor point. Release that. And let's see, the first thing I'm going to do is change the stroke width. Right now, this is set to quite thick. I'm just going to bring this down to 12 pixels here. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make sure that this sits right here at the very center, right? And then I need to make sure that I set the anchor point. This is the anchor point. This is the anchor point or the pivot point. You see, we want all transformations to take place from the very bottom here. So in order to move this anchor point, we're going to get to the pan behind anchor point tool and then click and drag this and just move it right there. All right. So we've got that. All right, let me zoom out a bit. So 12 pixels with that. Let's go inside. Right now it says Shape Layer 1. I'll press Enter Return on the keyboard to rename this to Line, and then open up its contents and look inside the Shape 1 here. Inside the Stroke, first of all, I'll grab, I'll grab the eyedropper and select the color of my choice. And at the same time, since I'm here now, I'm going to also make sure that I have in both ends, I have round corners. And we can do this. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit so you can see. We can do this inside the line cap. Instead of a butt cap, I'm going to choose a round cap. All right. There we go. Both ends are round corners. Now that we set this, we don't need to have the Title Action Save. So just click and disable that. And now we are ready to go to the next step and start animating this straight segment, the straight line. With the line layer selected inside the timeline, let's go ahead and animate the starts and the end of this straight segment. And we can do this by adding the very powerful Trim Paths operator. Now, looking inside the Trim Paths options, for example, we can animate the start or the end. So in this case, I'll animate both the start and the end. So I will click on the stopwatch for both the start and the stopwatch for the end to create the first two keyframes. I will scrub the current time indicator to perhaps two seconds, or I can actually, if I want to be more precise, I can use the keyboard shortcut to advance 10 frames at a time. 
most like this is going to be a bit too slow but that's okay we can change that so i will set the start from 0 to 100 here here's the other keyframe and set the end from 0 to 100 as well so when we press the spacebar for the run preview we won't see a change because these are identical keyframes so mark you select this two and i'm going to offset them in time now the more i offset these keyframes the length of the line increases okay so it's totally up to you how much you want to see the line the length of the line so let's say i'm okay with that here let's do another ramp preview it's too slow so mark you select this two bring them closer and then perhaps mark you select those two as well because now the line of the length increased and perhaps around here so let's see let's press the space bar that looks good still slow bring them closer there we go okay so so far so good but let's see we still have to work on it so i will mark you select those four keyframes right now what we have is a linear animation so i'm going to change the interpolation from linear to is it is so i can just right click on top of a keyframe here keyframe assistant is it is let's do a round preview that looks better maybe a little slow so let's bring this closer and then let's see i will select those two keyframes go inside the graph editor and by the way for type here I'm working inside the speed graph and with this keyframe, this is the second keyframe. I will double click to bring up the keyframe velocity. This is the incoming velocity. I'll set this to 75. Double click on the outgoing velocity. I'll set this also to 75%. So the animation here basically is it accelerates, it peaks right here and then it decelerates. So let's do another ramp preview here. Press the space bar. Not bad. We'll do the same here. Bring up the graph editor. Double click. I'll set this to 75. Double click and set the outgoing to 75 as well. Same motion. Let's do another ramp preview. That looks great. Okay. Not sure about the time, but I think that looks okay. If you want to have less of the line length, you can bring this closer. You have something along those lines. All right, so now we are ready to go to the next step and continue working animating this straight segment. So the line animates the way we want it to animate, but how about adding some more of these lines? So we can do this by adding another operator and that is the repeater another powerful animator here let's go ahead and drill in to see some of the options we've got the options the copies okay so i'll set mine to 12 and then look inside the transformation options here we have the position for example on the x you see i'm going to bring this to zero and of course now if we were to animate this we won't see any changes even if we have 12 of these what we want to do is actually rotate this and everything is going to rotate from this anchor point that's why we set the pivot point right here at the very bottom so i want to rotate this well we don't know the exact rotation so we can just click here and then type 360 divided by the number of copies is set to 12 all right so we can have something along those lines not bad the problem with this approach is that what happens if you change the number of copies then you're going to have to do the division again so there is an easy way to do this i'm going to set this back to zero all right and then i'm just going to hold down the alt key or the option key and then click on the stopwatch to get the expression here and i'm going to type 360 divided and then take the pick whip right here and then bring it right on top of the number of copies right now mine are set to 12 it doesn't really matter here this is going to do this automatically so 
press the space bar and it works which means if i decided to change this let's say to 20 i don't have to do any calculations just going to do it automatically since i have the expression here all right so i'm going to bring this back to 12. all right let's do another run preview and that's what we get that looks good i like the animation for the first line let's do another run preview and now we are ready to go to the next step and add more lines to this animation. So we've got the first line animated with the trim paths operator and the repeater. Things look great. Let's go ahead and make the first duplicate by using the keyboard shortcuts. So in this case, what we need to do is actually to nudge the entire layer into the timeline here so we can see the changes so i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to nudge this 10 20 30 frames right now into the timeline i'm also going to press the letter u twice to show only the modified properties and then inside the stroke one I'm just going to grab the eyedropper and then change the color of the stroke so let's see what we've got so far I will scrap the current time indicator and as you can see the first line begins and finishes then we have this gap so that means we nudged the line to too much into the timeline so i'm going to go actually and nudge this back and again i'm going to use this keyboard shortcut and not just perhaps only 10 frames so let's see what we've got Press the space bar. That looks great. Better at least. But another thing I can do is press the letter S on the keyboard and then change the entire scale. I'm going to scale the line to 2, 85%. Let's see how that works. Press the space bar. Things already look better. Okay. Not sure about the line length here. So we can press. This time just the letter u and see only the properties with keyframes here we can shift select those two and we can change those you see we can change that and i think that's enough here you see and that looks so much better so we got the line two let's go ahead and duplicate this again so we have line three and i'm going to offset this i will nudge the entire layer into the timeline just by 10 frames press the letter u twice to show only the modified properties i grab the eyedropper tool in for the stroke and perhaps change to this color here let's see what we have press the space bar not bad but i can just scale the entire line here to press the letter s I'm gonna scale this to 65 you see now we have some variation here great and one more time let's go ahead and duplicate line three we have line four again i will offset this into the timeline i'll nudge this to 10 frames and press the letter u twice to show only the modified properties i will grab the eyedropper tool and sample this color of my choice and as for the scale value, I will leave this on 65% or you can just scale it down even more. All of these properties are subject to change depending your end results. All right, so let's go ahead and add more variation between those lines here. So I'll start with the line four. I press the letter U to just show the properties with keyframes and I'm going to make sure that I'm the very beginning of this line 4 here in the timeline. So I will press the letter J on the keyboard to go to the previous visible keyframe. Then I'll press the letter R on the keyboard to set the first rotation here. I will click on the stopwatch. Here's the first keyframe then press the letter U again to show the properties with keyframes. And then I want to make sure that I go to the very last visible keyframe on the line four. So for that, I press the letter K on the keyboard, keep pressing the letter K till I get 
to the last keyframe and set the rotation to 30 degrees. So I'll do the same, well, almost the same for the line three. Press the letter U to show the keyframes. Press the letter J to go to the first, to the previous visible keyframe, the very first one here. Press the letter R, set the first keyframe. Press the letter U to show the properties with keyframes. Go to the last visible keyframe on the line four here and set this to 60 degrees. Do the same for the line two here. Press the letter J to go to the beginning of the timeline here on the line two. Letter R for the rotation, set the first keyframe and then go to the last visible keyframe for the line two. I'll set the rotation to 90 degrees. And for the line here, just going to scrub this to the very beginning. R for rotation, click on the stopwatch, press the letter U again, go to the last visible keyframe for the line and set this to the rotation to minus 30. All right, so let's go ahead and press the space bar for the round preview. And this is what we have. Fantastic. Looks so good here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and actually continue a bit more and add another element here for another variation. So we've got a great animation going on here with some straight segments and rotations. Let's go ahead and take this even further by adding another shape layer. Now with nothing selected into your timeline, I'll go ahead and grab the ellipse tool. I'll press the shift key on the keyboard, then click and drag to create a perfect circle. And at least on my end, I'm also going to press the space bar to position this around the composition. Release that, still holding the shift key, create a circle as such. All right. Now I want to make sure that the circle sits in the very center of the composition. So I'll go up to the window menu and bring up the align panel. So we're going to align this into the composition horizontally and vertically. All right. So another thing I want to make sure is that the pivot point, this anchor point sits at the very center. So all animations take place from that center point. So go up to the layer menu, transform, and then center anchor point in layer content or use the keyboard shortcuts. Great. Now let's rename shape layer one to circle. And let's see, I'm also going to change the stroke color to a color of my choice. And I'll animate the stroke width. So I will scrub the current time indicator to the very beginning. I'll set the stroke width first from 80 pixels here. I'll set the first keyframe, scrub the current time indicator to let's say 20 frames. And for the next, for the second keyframe, I'll set this to zero. So I have something like that here. Okay. All right. So this is one thing. Another thing I can do is scale the whole circle here. So I press the letter S on the keyboard, go back to the very beginning, set the first keyframe on the scale. I'll scale this from zero to Let's bring up the modify properties by pressing the letter U twice. So I'll press the letter K on the keyboard to go to the next visible keyframe and I'll set the scale to 100%. Okay, still around preview here. That looks good. Well, almost good. Which means let's offset this in time just a bit. Perhaps let's say like somewhere in between those two. I'm talking about the line one and line two. Press the space bar. Looks like that. So I'll press the letter U here and we got the stroke with the animate. So I will marquee select those two. Right click. Keyframe system, easy is. I'll change the interpolation to easy is. Inside the graph editor, we can change those now. 
this is going to be set. This is actually the incoming velocity. I'll set this to 75. This is the outgoing velocity. I'm also going to change this to 75. Exit the graph editor Let's to another RAM preview. It looks good. And you can continue, you know, working on this and make, you know, make sure the animation is nice and smooth according to your liking. Don't forget to save. Control is to save, command is to save. All right, so we finished everything. Let's go ahead and trim the whole animation movie. So I will scrap the current time indicator to the end of the animation, but not to the end of the entire movie. I just want to keep the animated keyframes, which ends around here, but I'm also going to give a bit of a buffer space. So I'm going to move the current time indicator right there. And then I'll press the letter N on the keyboard to set the end of the work area right here to this current time. Right click and then trim composition to work area. Let's go ahead and press the space bar for the last run preview. Now it loops. We have a little bit of a buffer space. Now let's go ahead and export the entire composition here. So go up to the composition menu and then add to the render queue. I'll leave everything as is. Here's the output module. You can click on that. And as a format, we're going to choose the H264. You have a lot of different choices here, but this is highly recommend you use that. As for the output, this is where you're going to export your movie. And all you have to do is just press the render button and the entire composition will be rendered out.